Today we're talking about the rotary engine. What is a rotary engine? How does it work? Is it better than a conventional piston engine? And what does its future hold? Hop in with me for a quick drive through. First of all, where can we see this type of engine? Many of you might say Mazda, and you'd be right, like the Mazda RX-7 and RX-8. Three generations of the Mazda RX-7 and the singular generation RX-8 that followed share this type of engine. These cars had a rotary engine with a volume of just 1.3 liter, which produced 232 horsepower. That's a lot of output for such a small volume. Well, let's look at some of its features. A rotary engine is a type of internal combustion engine in which the main moving working part, the rotor, rotates. The rotor is essentially a piston with a combustion chamber and it rotates. No additional mechanisms are required to obtain rotary motion, whereas conventional combustion engines with pistons need a complex crank mechanism to convert the reciprocating motion of the piston into the rotational movement of the crankshaft. That's the main difference between a rotary versus a conventional engine with reciprocating pistons. The rotary engine is often called a Wankel engine or Wankel rotary engine. Engine. That is because it was originally conceived and developed by the German engineer and inventor Felix Wankel. Wankel received his first patent for the engine in 1929. After World War II, Wankel worked at NSU Motorwerken, a German company that produced motorcycles. He worked under Walter Frude. Wankel did extensive research into rotary valve seals. Although Wankel had a patent, the basic design and engineering concept belonged to Freud. The first engine had a rotating chamber and a stationary rotor. There were some limitations to that design. So this led the team to change the circuit. The first rotor engine began operating in 1958. After NSU Motor Workings announced it had created a new and promising engine, many big name car companies started licensing design to produce rotary engines. We saw the results led with the Chevrolet Aerovet XP895, Chevrolet Vega, Mercedes C111, Citroen M35, and luxurious Citroen GS Barotor GZ. Believe it or not, a third of the license ended up in Japan. The toughest Japanese company to make rotary engines turned out to be Mazda. So how does a rotary engine work? Unlike a traditional piston engine, a rotary engine doesn't have a gas distribution system or crank mechanism. Their functions are taken over by the eccentric shaft, and the rotors act essentially like pistons, and stationary gears set the path of the rotation of the rotor. The base of the motor consists of an intermediate casing, which is located in the middle of the motor and stator, which form the working chain Chambers. The rotors themselves are located in the stators. The entire engine structure is covered by the front and rear housing, in which the stationary gears are fixed. It's along these that the rotors rotate. The whole engine is pulled together by long bolts. Overall, it's a rather simple design, not complex. The design is based on a triangular rotor, which has convex edges or faces. The rotor rotates in a planetary manner around a stationary gear that acts as a stator. When the apex of the rotor triangle rotates, it moves in a pattern like a complex curve within the shape of the working chamber, inside which the air-fuel mixture is ignited. Also, in the walls of the rotor are recesses that form the volume of the combustion chamber. The absence of a gas distribution system helps simplify the design, and a high power density is achievable, even with a small and light engine, because it lacks the crankshaft, connecting rod, and other interfaces between the chambers. So, the rotary has less moving parts than a reciprocating engine. In fact, it's about 35 to 40 percent less parts. If we were to compare the dimensions of a rotary versus a piston engine with the same power, the latter would be twice as large. So a car with a rotary engine is easier to accelerate, and it's smooth. Plus, the rotary engine doesn't suffer a lot of stress at high RPM, even if the car is accelerating to speeds over 60 mile an hour in low gear. A car with a rotary engine is also easier to balance and has better handling. Even the lightest car doesn't suffer much vibration because the rotary engine vibrates significantly less than a reciprocating engine. The rotary motor has the same four-stroke cycle as its competitor, the piston engine. One working cycle of the engine consists of four strokes and one revolution of the rotor, or three revolutions of the eccentric shaft. The first stroke is the intake phase, the second is compression, the third is combustion, and the fourth is exhaust. In the intake phase, the rotor's motion causes a drop in pressure, which draws in an air-fuel mixture. The 
The mixture gets drawn around the rotor and is forced into the second stroke of the cycle. As the rotor continues to turn, the captured or cross-hashed volume contained between the rotor and housing decreases, compressing the air-fuel mixture. This is the compression phase. When the active mixture volume is a minimum, one or more spark plugs initiate combustion. We are now in the combustion phase, where we see rapid rises in pressure and temperature. The sudden expansion of the now gaseous fuel mixture transmits a force to the eccentric through the rotor. As the rotation proceeds, the expanding gases drive the rotor until the exhaust port is exposed, releasing them. The exhaust process continues as the intake port opens to begin a new cycle. Let's assume we have a piston engine and a rotor engine. Both are 1.3 liters. The piston engine has 180 degrees per stroke, but a rotor has 270 degrees per stroke. So if both engines are at similar max RPMs, it means the rotor has 1.5 times as many milliseconds to accomplish each stroke. That's why rotaries breathe well, because they have more time to draw in and release the mixture. Rotaries also have more time for the power stroke so it can get the most out of the combustion gas, especially at higher RPM. A 1.3 rotary delivers one and a half times the power and torque of a like-sized conventional engine. So it's like a two liter piston engine. Here's why. The rotor has three edges or flags. So one rotation of the rotor produces two times as many power pulses as a one cylinder reciprocating engine. But there are drawbacks too. The rotary also has one and a half times as many milliseconds to transfer heat from the burning mixture into the oil and water. That's why rotaries waste more heat in the process to stay cool themselves. Another disadvantage to the rotary engine is its small resource because of its engine design. A rotary can last as little as 30,000 to 125,000 miles, or an average of 65 to 70,000 miles. A car with a rotary engine makes a good weekend car. That's because there are multiple sealing elements on the rotor to isolate the combustion chambers. The main ones with the most load are the apexes, which are installed on the rotor tops. These seals wear out extremely quickly as their working angle is constantly changing. Worn seals cause leaks between chambers. Pressure differences between them are significant, which impacts the efficiency of the engine. And since the rotor experiences temperature drops at each stroke, this leads to rapid wear. Add to this the pressure exerted on its rubbing surfaces and the crescent shape of the chambers, the high rotation speed of the rotor, and the short length of the working stroke don't contribute to full combustion. This is the reason to push out the exhaust gases that are still hot and not yet fully burned. And in addition to the combustion byproducts, the oil is also present there, which when combined makes the exhaust gas quite toxic. That's why the piston engine is much more environmentally friendly than a rotary engine. As far as oil is concerned, consumption of a rotary engine can be about 0.25 gallons per 620 miles. The gas mileage isn't ideal either. You'll only be able to drive, well, miles on a gallon. And don't forget the high cost of the engine itself since it requires high precision equipment and very high quality materials to manufacture the engine. And it wears out faster. Considering all these reasons, we can see why the rotary engine isn't booming now. The 1973 oil crisis was the final nail in the coffin in terms of dramatic advancements of the rotary in the U.S. and Canada. Japan is the only country in the East that hasn't fully lost faith in the rotary engine. But even there, manufacturers' enthusiasm for the engine has cooled, which is why there hasn't been much noteworthy development months thereafter. Mazda is the last one to hang on to it. And here's an interesting story and controversy around the Mazda RX-7. Kenichi Yamamoto was responsible for the development of rotary engines in Mazda, especially the Mazda RX-7. He led the Mazda development team the goal to make the Wankel engine more reliable. And this was back in 1961. Surprisingly, the engine saved the whole company in its day. In the early 60s, the Japanese Ministry of International Trade and Industry, MIGI, feared that the Japanese auto industry might collapse and found it necessary to limit the number of local car companies. Mitty approved Toyota, Nissan, and Isuzu, but not Mazda, which was known as Toyo Kagyo at the time. But Mazda was able to demonstrate that their rotary engine technology has unique and viable reasons to be built for the international market. So Mitty agreed, and Mazda continued working. With the resounding success of the RX-7, Yama 
Yamamoto became president of Mazda. Under his leadership, most unusual models rolled off the assembly lines, with the culmination being a stunning rotary victory by a Mazda 787B sports car at the 1991 Le Mans. It was the first victory for a Japanese manufacturer and the only such victory until Toyota won the 2018 24 Hours at Le Mans. Since 2004, the sales of the sports coupe started its decline. In 2004, some 25,000 cars were sold, but by 2010, less than 1,500 were sold. Mazda did not succeed in addressing the engine's impact, the environment, or improving fuel efficiency. In 07, the project was presented at the Tokyo Motor Show. It centered around a new rotary engine with an elliptical combustion chamber, an enlarged rotor shaft, and possible direct fuel injection. But sadly, it would only remain a project, and no mass production was achieved. The latest Mazda with a rotary engine was the RX-8, but it got discontinued in 2012. So now you're probably wondering what's the future of rotary engine. Well, there hasn't been much buzz in the news in the last 10 years. You can draw your own conclusion, but I think the silence speaks for itself. Mazda confirmed that its new rotary engine will be a small unit, serving exclusively as a range extender for electric vehicles, starting in 2022, with the battery electric vehicle version of the MX-30. If you like this episode, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for your support.